Hey you, let's dive right on into determining what is the best sweater for your body shape. Now the first thing I want you to do is to look at the areas surrounding the sweater just as equally as you're looking at what is covered by the sweater. So you have your torso, obviously, for the sweater, but around your torso too is going to be your neck, and below your torso is obviously your legs. I was gonna say bottoms. You wear bottoms on your legs. You get what I mean. And so the sweater you pick is going to be influenced, maybe not directly, but indirectly by what your neck is doing, by what your bottoms are doing, what your legs are doing, even what your shoes are doing, but we're not really covering shoes in this video. My goal with this video is for you to walk away with a few details to look out for when you are picking a sweater to determine whether or not it's going to work on you and your body and also fit into your personal style. There are a few different main parts to a sweater. One of the biggest ones I think people see the most quickly is the neckline. So for example, V-necks. V-necks work great for elongating the neck, but if you have a long neck, it could make it look really long. My neck test is longer than my belly button test, and if you don't know what that is, I will link that video at the end of this one. But if you have a shorter neck, it does a really nice job of elongating your neck. Now, if you also have a large bust, it can help kind of de-emphasize it. Yes, it does kind of can show it off sometimes, depending on how large your bust is and how deep the V is, but compared to a crew neck, a V-neck works better on a larger bust. With a v-neck, I would pair it with a lower rise jean and even a looser jean. I think that look, especially right now, is very trendy. But in general, they can make your torso appear shorter. Now, if you have a longer torso, that's not as big of an issue. But if you have a shorter torso, it really cuts off that real estate. So opting for a lower rise when you have a lower neckline just kind of brings everything more proportionally down. But then switching to a crew neck or a just kind of more normal, not really a neck neckline. You could say a lot of the opposite things for a crew neck. It actually does elongate the torso because you have a color block coming up all the way up to your neck. The general guidelines that I follow, and I don't always follow them, but the general guidelines, if you're looking to flatter yourself the most, is to pick the neckline that's most flattering to you and then pick a contrasting color to your skin tone. So for example, for me and my shorter torso, if I really want to elongate my torso, having one color block that comes here and really clearly demarks where my torso stops and ends is gonna be better with a contrasting color. So because I'm pretty pale, having a darker color or even a more saturated color, that is gonna draw attention to elongating my torso and kind of showing off my neck. But if I wanna go the V-neck route, because I can, because I want to, I might opt for a less contrasting color so that it doesn't seem as stark. Now there are ways to help this with accessories and I will have that video linked down below in the description box finding the best accessories for your body shape and what you're wearing. Now moving on to a very popular yet highly controversial neckline when it comes to sweaters are the turtleneck, mock necks, and cowl necks. I feel like cowl necks are the least controversial but some people just don't like having a bunch of stuff around their neck and that's fine, I get it. Turtlenecks and mock necks do the same thing as crew necks but even to the more extreme. So if you have a very long neck like I do, love me a turtleneck, love me a mock neck because it puts this thing in balance. I think what's actually more impactful on how you feel in a sweater when it's a turtleneck or a mock neck is how thick or thin that material is. And we will go into that in here just a second. But the nice thing about cowl necks and turtlenecks is that you can kind of adjust them. And when you have a garment that is adjustable without tailoring, it's beautiful and it's something that everyone should have so that they can find what works best for them. But what do you do if you have a shorter neck? I would opt for a cowl neck because you can get that mock neck, turtleneck like feel, but that neck kind of hangs down a little bit more. And again, you can adjust it if you want it to be coming up more on a neck you can or if you want to kind of pull it down you can too. I would also choose a thinner fabric so that you get more of that play and you also don't get all of that chunky material gathering up here at your neck and at your face. You know what we're here anyway let's just talk about the chunky sweater versus the thinner knit sweater. The nice thing about a chunky sweater is the texture it adds and the draping it adds. We all love a nice drape. It can camouflage any areas we're just maybe not feeling the greatest about. It's why we love sweater weather. But but it's also important to know that if you have too much chunky knit in one place where you don't already have a lot of real estate, it's going to look even chunkier and heavier, which might be actually really uncomfortable to have that much thick fabric in one spot. Some sweaters just are made for longer torsos and some are made for shorter torsos, but nobody talks about it. Not to toot my own horn, but 
I talk about it like a lot and you should subscribe and hit the notification bell. So the nice thing about chunky sweaters is it can actually add structure because if you do a little tuck on the side or in the middle, the little half tuck, you can actually create some nice structure and shape to your body. When if you didn't tuck it in, maybe you would just like look like a big sack, not you, the sweater would look like a big sack. But if you're petite or if you have a short torso and that bulk and that chunkiness is really long, then it's going to overwhelm your body. For your more thinner kind of typical knit sweaters, I think those work the same as a t-shirt. So in any situation where you would normally wear say a white tee or a black tee, or a beige tee or whatever tees you like to wear. Just change out one of those thinner knit sweaters and you'll get the same effect, but you'll get the coziness factor. I think length on sweaters is super important for the same reasons I just talked about in kind of the chunky knit sweater issues that can rise if they are too long. But if they're thinner and oversized, you might not have that issue. It might be easier to tuck in. But in general with sweaters, I don't think you want them to be too short. I mean, why would we wanna wear a sweater and show our midriff at the same time. I'm just picturing that and that sounds cold. I would also say you don't want a sweater to go past your hip bones. That gives you a little extra play depending on the rise of the jeans or pants or skirts that you're wearing to tuck it in, do a half tuck, do whatever you wanna do, but you don't have to. Again, if you don't tuck it in, your rise doesn't matter. Now let's talk about some sleeves. We're actually gonna start here at the shoulders. So I think it's really important to know if you have broad shoulders, maybe proportional shoulders, or more petite shoulders for your frame, not for everyone else's, just in comparison to your hips. That is the other horizontal line of your body, your shoulders and your hips. Everything else is vertical, which is why I mostly talk about vertical body shapes. But it is nice to know what kind of shoulders you're working with because you want to know how you want to emphasize them, if you want to emphasize them at all. For example, off the shoulder, cold shoulder, sweaters. Despite how it's not adding any bulk to your shoulders at all, it is highlighting your shoulders. So it's going to bring emphasis. It's going to bring the eye straight to your shoulders, to your frigid, very cold shoulders. So if you have broader shoulders, it could show them off. If you like your shoulders, I say show them off. But if you feel like your shoulders are really broad for your frame and you don't want to emphasize them, I wouldn't pick a cold shoulder. The other thing that's important is just like necklines, that contrast in that cold shoulder. I also wouldn't pick a puff sleeve. So it's really interesting. A puff sleeve and a cold shoulder, despite being the exact opposite of each other, do the exact same things. They add emphasis and they add attention. Moving on down the arms, we have the dolman sleeve or the bat wings that we see on so many sweaters. They're so cozy. I feel like all of my favorite sweaters have them because they just have that great loungy look. Dolman sleeves can actually lessen a broad shoulder. It kind of softens the angles that are around here and it kind of makes them blend into the rest of your sweater. The other important thing to know is where that bat wing ends is where your waist usually is. So you don't always wanna do like a high rise or what would be a high rise on you. If you are bringing your legs, not your legs, your pants, your rise up to where that bat wing ends, you're really cutting off any sort of opportunity to create a torso or a waist out of it. And to be honest, you don't need that much. You just need a little bit to show some differentiation between your wings and your body. And that's usually where a French tuck, you know, kind of that little half tuck in the very middle, that is what is really nice when it comes to those bat wings and those dolman sleeves because you have that fabric still going down where the sleeve is, but you're still getting a little bit of that waist and a little bit of that torso into the whole picture. All right, now let's move all the way down to your wrists and the bottom of your sleeves. Now I am a huge, huge advocate for just rolling up the sleeves just a little bit, just pushing them up. If you have a shorter torso, you can push them up even more. So how much you want to push up your sleeves or roll up your sleeves is an important part to sweater choosing because if you roll them up a lot, you are going to stretch them out. If you have those sweaters that are like really ribbed at the wrists, you know that once you pull them up, they never shrink all the way back down. The reverse of that also works. If you have a balloon sleeve that comes right here and it's just all balloony right here, it can sometimes be harder to roll those up because that balloon can fall down. So it just depends on how much you want to roll up your sleeves, how often you roll up your sleeves. That can also be a lifestyle preference if you are constantly using your hands and your sleeves are getting in the way. And then let's talk about no sleeves at all, the sweater vest that is very, very popular right now, very trendy looking. So let's talk about how 
to choose the best one for your body shape. The first thing I would say is to choose a sweater vest that hits you at the right spot. There are lots of them out there, a lot that are very tailored, a lot that are super long and baggy. So you need to really pay attention to that measurement of how long it is and how long you are. You want it to come just a bit above your hip bones, I would say. You don't want it to hit your hip bones because you don't want it to come at the widest part of you, but you want to have a little bit of wiggle room to either fluff it so that it looks slouchy or to tuck it. You wanna have that ability to choose. A cropped one is going to be harder to style than a looser one. Longer one, what I was going to say is that a looser one is actually also going to be easier to style because you can do a lot more to layer with it. If it's too tight to your body, you're gonna be really limited on what you can layer versus if it's a little bit looser, if it's a little bit baggier, one, it's a little bit of a trendier look and two, it's a lot easier to layer. The last thing with sweater vests to pay attention to are the shoulders. Some of them can be really oversized in the shoulders and some of them can be, I would say, a little bit more tailored. And so if it's actually a little bit oversized, it could just make it look like it's all one piece of your torso, which I think would be the aim of the trend right now. I hope that was helpful. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to give it a like, comment, down below and of course subscribe and click the bell all of those things thank you so much for watching and i can't wait to see you in my next video bye